Ragin dariando sukushetere rakosa katere ma la ronza la vadi halla tu dada basindara ba eko san katun kasekere ba lebrando sharam raga sekenda linda roba salavado koroba sandere ma shinere ba raga sekete kete 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 kanto robo janda la ba raga sokote le ba ya la ronda sotere ba lebranda shekere ba. Raga take him, Rega suka take him, Bashunara bala brando sakata, Raga suka taka tala yana masanda raba jana bada 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 bada. Ike di nelu, Ike di nala, Ike di nebenine. Manike Jesus Kareya, Ike di nelu, Ike di nala. I'm singing in my dialect, Igbo language. And those of you that are Igbos, whether you are in Nigeria, you are outside Nigeria, you are in the USA, you are in Rome, you are in you know, Italy, you are in Germany, I say good morning to you. Join me to sing this song. Ike di nebenine, manike Jesus kareya. Ike di nelu, ike di nala. Ike di nebenine, manike Jesus kareya. Come on. Ike di nelu, ike di nala. Ike di nebenine, manike Jesus kareya. Ike di nelu, ike di nala, ike di nebenine, man ike Jesus kareha. Open your mouth, join me. Ike di nelu. What it means, there is power in the heavens. <laughs> there is power on the earth. There is power everywhere. But the mighty power of Jesus is greater than all these powers. So join me. Ike di nelu, Ike di nala, Ike di nebenine, man Ike Jesus carrying. One more time. Ike di nelu, Ike di nala, Ike di nebenine, man Ike Jesus carrying. Ike di nelu. Ike di nala, Ike di nebenine, man Ike Jesus kareha. Yes, Ike di nelu, Ike di nala, Ike di nebenine, man Ike Jesus kareha. I'm led to sing in my dialect this morning. I'm led to worship the excellency of the ages in my tongue this morning i'm led to speak to him in the language that satan cannot understand which is praying to him in the holy ghost because while you pray in the holy ghost you can also sing in the holy ghost in la da da na da in la 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 na da da do na da bo sekere le bro shandara reke se nga su la da basore zoke le se ndiri la bro Ijunda sukere la roba, iko sakanteri ale bro, zuka zeka la denda bro, zaga zele mbazu, raga zazalu, raga zeke dede basundere le bro de sheke, raga zalenda zugara, raga seke ri ala bro de sheke, raga zelenda kusaka ya la bonza le ya. Uzende lianda tuke seketele ya la bronda seketele ba ya lapo. Raka seketele ya narea. Rogo seketele ba janea. Excellency of the ages, my Lord and my God, I just thank you. I thank you for a wonderful day. A brand new day that you have created just for myself and for your children. The faithful ones who are the true followers of my ministry, two fans of my ministry and my person. My Lord and my God, I just thank you. A lot of people died in the course of the week. I even know someone whom I did Bible college with who died in the course of the last 
48 hours. My God, I am not better than these people that have died. Neither am I better than the sister that just died yesterday that I know of, that I did Bible college with. My Father, my God, your children who are online are not better than their mates, their family members who are dead, but they are still alive. Excellency of the ages, my spiritual director, the head of this ministry, the foundation of all that I have. My Father and my God, I thank you for this wonderful day, another day to make amends of all all our ills lord of heavens i want to say thank you thank you for the breath in my nursery thank you for the breath in the nostrils of your children who are the faithful faithful full faithful fans of this ministry my father and my god i thank you for even the enemies that are coming because i know that you will transform them in the course of time holy spirit i just give you all the praise i can't thank you enough my god and my lord Today, I ask that you rule over today. Take over in the name of Jesus. Because your word says in the book of Psalm 107, verse 1 to 3, it says, Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercies endure it forever. It says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has gathered from the lands and has redeemed from the hands of the enemy and from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. My Lord and my God, I know your children from different nations of the world are joining this morning, and I know you have gathered all of us, King of Kings, from all around the earth, so that we gather at your feet this morning once again on this online Monday morning prayer conference that you instituted, which you gave me, and it's tagged, I shall arise. My Father and my God, we have a reason this morning to do justice by doing the needful as your sons to stay at your feet to learn of your ways. My Lord and my God, do that which only you can do. Take all glory at the end of the day. Let no man take glory. And for what you're doing in my life and in this ministry, globally, my Father and my God, I am only humbled by your love for me and your love for my ministry. I am the least of the prophet, but Father, you do your work by glorifying yourself in my life. I decrease totally because I am nothing. I am dust, but you decided to use me. Father, I am so totally grateful. It is a mighty privilege to call me into the vineyard to be your spokes child, your spokes son, your spokes daughter, to be your oracle. My father and my God, how can I thank you? A lot of people desire to be your spokesperson, but you didn't call them. You don't call the ones that are qualified, but you qualify the ones that you have called. My father and my God, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the children that are online this morning. Thank you for the internet. Thank you for everyone. My God and my Father, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my friends. I even thank you for my foes because I know soon enough the foes will turn to friends. My Father and my God, I give you praise this morning. I release the blood of Jesus over the whole environment where I am right now. I dip myself in it. I dip your children that are online in it. And I say, my Father and my God, let my ministry angels be on guard to perfect all that concerns me. And let this place be conducive for your visitation. Father, breathe upon me your breath of life. Let me come alive again that we may learn of you. These I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. With that, I say good morning to all of you. And I say welcome to this online Monday morning prayer conference. Instagram live that happens every Monday Nigerian time 6 a.m. to 6 30 well sometimes in the course of um, you know months past and in the course of some conferences the time may be overshot and some people are suggesting in my DM that we need to start running it about one hour. I've been doing some test runs, you know, doing it for about one hour. And maybe today we might drive it up to one hour again. I do not know how the Holy Ghost is going to lead us. Uh, but um, I am submitting under the directorship of my Lord and Master, the King of Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to read the scriptures as we normally do. 
And um, the first scripture I'm reading from is from the NIV Life Application Bible. Life Study Application Bible, forgive me. All right, I'm reading the first book, which is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 21. And it says, I am afraid that when I come again, my God will humble me before you. And I will be grieved over many who have sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity sexual sin and debauchery in which they have indulged excuse me i'm reading the book of colossians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 1 to 6 it says since then ye have been raised with christ since then ye have been you have been raised with christ set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on, thing, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is in your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, Whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. That is from the NIV Life Study Application Bible. I'm also going to have to read, well, uh, not all the scriptures, but I'm going to read the Colossians from the King James Version of the same chapter 3, 1 to 6. It says, If ye be reason with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concubines and covetousness which is idolatry idolatry and verse 6 for which things sake the wrath of god cometh on the children of disobedience these are the words of the lord thanks be to god ladies and gentlemen saints of god i welcome you this morning to this online monday morning prayer conference uh, you may be joining for the first time. I am the famous Nollywood actress coming out from Nigeria, African continent to the rest of the world. And uh, I want to say I was once a beauty queen. I'm a fashion model, photography model. I'm a writer. I am an ordained woman of God. I'm an ordained preacher over more than 10 years ago. And then I am an academic doctor. By the grace of God, I make my boast in Jesus. I am the first female academic doctor, not honorary doctorate degree, but academic doctor in the whole of Nollywood. We have a lady who is also a doctor, now a professor from the comedy side of the entertainment industry. But as far as acting is concerned, I make my boast with all humility in Jesus. I am the first female academic doctor from Nollywood and I know that this thing is not common is an uncommon you know position that the Lord has given to me and I do not take it for granted I am completely humbled by the love of God in my life so by the grace of God I speak with you and I speak to you with authority standing on the fact that I am well 
read because I have my first degree in English language. I have master's in social work. I had Bible college in pastoral leadership. And um, I have a lot of other courses, certificate courses, one year courses. I have my PhD in Christian education and ministerial acts. So when I'm speaking to you by the grace of God, I'm speaking to you on the foundation of authority ladies and gentlemen when we look at the scripture in john 17 9 17 9 the bible records maybe i should read it out for naysayers john 17 9 says jesus was speaking he says i pray for them I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are time. The scripture says that Jesus is speaking, that he's praying not for the world, but praying for those that the Lord Almighty, the Holy Spirit, has given to him. Meaning that Jesus is saying, he didn't come for everyone. Oh yes, he came for everyone. He came to save the lost. But the ones that will be saved are the lost. L-O-S-T. Who run after Jesus and call upon him to save them. Just like the ten lepers in the Bible. Who heard about Jesus and they were screaming on top of their voice and they said Jesus son of David have mercy upon us and Jesus had a turn to them because they called upon him so the people that Jesus will save as much as he came for everyone are the ones who explicitly reach out to him who run to him, who call upon him, who say to him, Jesus, I have sinned. Jesus, I cannot help myself. Jesus, I need you to help me. Save me from myself before I destroy myself. Save me, Jesus, because I know that the power for salvation resides in your hands. It is those who scream, who cry, who run with a broken heart to Jesus, seeking his salvation. Those are the ones that he will save. And that is the meaning of that scripture. He says, I pray not for them. I do not pray for the world, but I pray for them who are time. Time is who? He's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about God Almighty. He said the ones that the Spirit of God has convicted to seek him, those are the ones that he has come to save. Those are the ones he will pray for. So if you don't seek Jesus, Jesus will not answer you. Just like you may be very sick. If you don't go to the hospital, you cannot get well. The doctor will not come to your house. Just like several years ago, I read something. Somebody was saying, all oh, these men of God, they cannot just go and heal people. Why can't they just go and heal people everywhere? And the person he was talking to asked him, oh my God, your hair is so full. Or rather told him, your hair is so full. How come it's so full? And he said, I haven't gone to the barbers. The man said, you see, you need to go to the barbers. So that your hair can be trimmed. That is the same way it is. If you are not well spiritually, you need to run to God. You need to go to listen to the men and women of God that God had called and ordained to hear the word of salvation. Just like if you're physically unwell, you need to go to the hospital. If you don't go to the hospital, you don't expect the doctor to come knocking at every door 
on the streets, in the estate, around your neighborhood and say, oh, I'm the doctor who is sick. I am, I'm, I'm here now to, to, you know, to, to bring them, you know, medication and healing to you. No, until you go to the hospital. So until you seek Jesus, you cannot be healed by him as much as he came for you and I, unless you seek him. Then there is another scripture, John eleven thirty five. 35. It just says two words. Jesus wept. Bible scholars and preachers interpret these two words. Different ways. Some of them say because Jesus wept. Because when we look at the story before that line. Jesus had been told that Lazarus. Whom he loved the family very well. Had died. And the Bible said he wept. But then this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that there is also another interpretation to that Jesus wept. And that interpretation, as the Holy Ghost gave to me, is the fact that Jesus was weeping and wept due to the unbelief of the people in the power that he possesses. Jesus was weeping due to the unbelief of the people's hard-heartedness. Jesus was weeping due to the un belief of the people and their hard heartedness and hard of understanding and their spirit of unbelief just like you and i recall that the bible says that jesus when he went back to his village when he had come fully into ministry the people from his village and the people that knew him were mocking him and saying is that not the son of the carpenter just like some people are saying is that not the actress you kill here what is she doing preaching they were mocking him. They were saying, that's the son of the carpenter. There's nothing he can do. But only a few that believed in him. The Bible says, those are the ones that he healed in his village. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do much. So also, because of the unbelief of people saying that, oh, some people are not qualified to be preachers, they would never get blessed. They would never receive their word of salvation. So Jesus was speaking. These people do not believe in me. That is what that scripture is saying. And that is why he was weeping. Just like he was weeping on the cross of Calvary. Just like he was groaning on the cross of Calvary. They are weeping. Weeping him. Because they didn't understand why he came. Now, in the course of last week, servants of God, children of God, I treated the subject, sex before marriage, which I am also treating today, the part two of it. And I put up a two-minute introduction on my social media platforms. And um, this two-minute video is what you call, like we use the word in the movie industry, because I am an actress, I am educated, and I am still reading. We call such things intros, or we call them teasers, or we call them trailers. Just like when you want to watch a movie, you go to the cinemas, but on your TV, before you go to the cinemas, you will see splashes of, you know, parts of the movie which will trigger you to want to watch the movie. So, in the course of last week, I put up a trailer that is supposed to trigger the discerning to arise, to juggle their mind, to wake them up, to tickle their fancy, so that they can go and watch the full video on my YouTube channel. Because the two minute video did not just end at me saying, oh, why would someone not indulge in sexual activity with someone who had proposed to them? That video ended with a clip that says, subscribe to my YouTube channel, link the bio on my page so that you can have access to my YouTube channel. To watch the full video. Under that same two minute trailer. That video. 
There is a write-up that I put with scriptures that I detailed down there. And I wrote this writing that says, Premarital sex or sex before marriage causes you to be unduly entangled with a partner that you may not be compatible with. And I put quotations of scriptures underneath it. Of course, the first few minutes, I think I, out of typographical error, I put, you know, first Timothy instead of second Timothy, but later I corrected it. Because there are people who saw this thing and I corrected it. And some people, out of the hardness of their heart, could not wake up, even though they claim to be educated, could not go and watch the full video on my YouTube channel. And they started running because the bloggers like to carry things that they find fanciful just to sell, just to build traffic and pull traffic on their pages. Well, the Lord has graced me to be a newsmaker and I give God all glory. In humility, I submit myself under the mighty hand of God for making me someone that has global impact. And all the bloggers, both the good ones and the bad ones, both the junk and the good ones, carried this. And unfortunately, a lot of people who are supposed to be educated, but from all indications, have proven themselves to be educated illiterates, carried this two-minute video on their head. And they've been making all manners of comments. And I read some of them. I don't even have time because I've been busy. Some of them have called me all manners of names. Some of them have insulted me. Some of them are even say, oh, she's not supposed to be a PhD holder. But sorry, I am already a PhD holder. I'm still pursuing other courses. And there's nothing you can do about it. So I have seen just like our Lord Jesus saw, due to the hardness of the heart of people, due to the lack of understanding, and due to the undiscerning spirit, and due to the spirit of wickedness that is prevalent in our society, due to the fact that people love to pull people down. People rejoice when people are down. People are happy to drag people People want to hear bad news about others. But when the good news come, they don't want to carry it. After all, when I got my PhD, how many bloggers carried it? Because we already know, and I already know because the scriptures tell us. In 1 John 5, 19, the Bible says, which is the word of God, it says we know we are of God. But the whole world lies in wickedness. So we know that people that are upon the face of the earth, majority of people, their heart is filled with malice, wickedness, and rot. Their heart is filled with envy and jealousy. They do not want to you know, celebrate things that are good. But when something is wrong, they'll run with it. Just like I put up a lie, you know, a post. You know, on my social media platforms, it says lies travel faster than the truth. So you need to learn to take your time to listen to things, the same thing, check things out before you jump into conclusion. But a lot of people just like it's still prevalent or was prevalent in the time when my Lord Jesus, I don't know if he's your Jesus, walked upon the face of the earth. They are so quick to judge. They are so quick to condemn him. They are so quick to say, oh no, he's the son of the carpenter. They were so quick to say, oh, Eukarya is now propagating sex before marriage. How? Why? I am a salvation preacher and I stand on the authority of Jesus. Everyone who knows me know that I'm a holiness and a righteousness preacher. And that is not going to change due to your hate. That is not going to change due to your dislike. I know that a lot of people are jealous of the glory that God has given to me. 
All I do is I pray for you that God will empower you to also do greatly. Because the reason for jealousy is when we are incapacitated. When we are you know, unfulfilled and we have not achieved what we should achieve. Then we are jealous of our friends, of our sisters, of our brothers, of our colleagues. My prayer is that you also arise and begin to walk in the path of your purpose. So that you can do great and mighty things so that you'll be known. But then, with the matters that is on the table, how can I possibly preach and say that one or people should engage in sex before marriage? After years of preaching, you could not simply discern that this was sarcasm. It was sarcasm. To be able to convey the message because that, that intro is supposed to be what people who are not born again normally say. Because when people are not born again, what they normally say is, who is saying that I should not have sex before marriage? When people are not born again, they will say, how can I marry someone? Just like so many people were writing all manners of things that are out of this world on my post and on different social media platforms. Some are saying, oh yeah, Apostle, you can't say in the writing. Listen, I stand this morning to correct that impression. I am a holiness preacher. I do not support sex before marriage. And I gave explicit Write up and post and definitions. I gave points on why people should not indulge in sex before marriage. Premarital sex, if that's what you want to call it. And I gave reasons and I said, engaging in sex before marriage colors your eyes. Engaging in sex before marriage is that you and your partner agree to dishonor God. Engaging in sex before marriage shows that you have given your spouse license, not spouse now, but your partner in sex. License to have sex whenever the urge comes upon them. Because if you can have sex with him or her before you have finalized the wedding rites before God and before man. That means they can also have sex outside with another person. And if you also have premarital sex or sex before marriage, it also means that you have jointly agreed with your partner in sexual crime to discredit God. And you need to understand, like I wrote, when you engage in premarital sex, when you engage in sex before marriage, it colors your eyes and blindfolds you not to see and notice character flaws. Character flaws in the partner you are in courtship with or that you are dating. Some character flaws like uncontrollable anger. Whether they are lying, whether they are thieves, whether they are pilfers, whether they are spiritual prostitutes. These are some of the things I mentioned in my video, but the undiscerning, the educated illiterates could not go to the YouTube channel because you and I know that you cannot upload a lengthy video on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok. That is why we have the YouTube app. Lengthy videos, that is where you dump it. And for the ones that are interested, they will go and watch it there. But I am not perturbed because I know that nothing can separate me from the love of God. I am not perturbed because I know that nothing can take me out of the will of God. I am not perturbed by the insult and the abuses. For Jesus, my Lord Almighty, I don't know if he's your Lord Almighty, says... He himself was abused, tortured, oppressed. So if I am abused for the sake of the gospel, that is part of what it means 
to be a preacher, to be a Christian, because Christianity is not a crown. Christianity is a cross. So servants of God, ladies and gentlemen, it is unfortunate that a lot of people are hard of understanding, a lot of people are hard of reasoning, a lot of people are filled with wickedness, a lot of people are filled with envy and jealousy. And a lot of people who claim that they are educated are truly not educated. A lot of people who say they are wise are not wise. Unfortunately also, just like the Bible says that even the very elect will be deceived. Look at what the scripture says in the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah 42. And I want to read 18 to 20. It says, Hear ye death. And look, ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? See many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Servants of God, ladies and gentlemen, beloved ones of God, darlings of God and my own darlings. You can see that the scriptures are very explicit. The very elect, those who are also supposed to be pastors, men and women of God, apostles like myself, preachers like myself, were also running to comment and write stupid things on my page, on my various platforms. Without doing research, without watching the full video, without going to see, let us even see what this lady said. Let us even hear her completely. Let us even check the dim body and some of them who are claiming to be righteous and holy. Some of them who don't wear weaver. Some of them who don't make up, who don't wear red lipstick like I'm wearing red lipstick. And they were quickly coming to my page to come and comment. Oga and Madam Holier Than Thou. The Bible says, So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Lord Almighty who showeth mercy. It is not when you are barefaced that is what is going to take you to heaven. That you don't rub lipstick, red one like I put on my mouth this morning, like I always put on my mouth. That is what is going to stop you or ensure that you go to heaven. It is the content of your heart. The motive behind you. The motive behind all that you do. The supposed elect who are unfortunately are not the elect also came and say, ah, you carrier obviously is not a woman of God. You carrier is a false prophet. Did you watch the video in full? Just like some of you that are also part of this ministry who come online. You didn't watch the full video. You watched just two minutes. And yet, over the time that we have been having this conference, I always say to you all, go to my YouTube channel and watch the full video. Because what you have showcased is that you are as empty as the rest of the people. If you had gone to watch the full video, you would not come to my DM and say, Oh, Apostle, no, that video you put on is not a girl. Did you watch the video? Holy wedge. Uncle and auntie, holy wedge. Uncle that has eyes and cannot see. Auntie that has ears and cannot hear. Uncle that is a man of God. And yet, you cannot search. The Bible says search the scriptures. Uncle that says you went to university and you don't understand what is sarcasm. 
And Tina says, I'm educated. And you don't understand that you should read, check. My prayer for you this morning is that the Lord have mercy on all of us. Have mercy on all of you. From the scriptures we have read this morning from the book of 2 Corinthians. We can see that our Lord Almighty is talking about the fact that we need to flee fornication. We need to set our hearts, our minds on what is above. So many scriptures which I cannot begin to read at this morning condemns fornication in totality. So many scriptures condemn immorality, sexual immorality. And I stand by the word of God. Because God does not want us to waste our life. You cannot be sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry that you see, just like I also said in my post. Just because someone says, I want to marry you, is that why you should sleep with them when they have not fulfilled the wedding rites? Just because you propose to someone, that's why you want to force the lady to sleep with you? No, my brother. My sister, because someone has put an engagement ring on your finger. That is not why you should give them your temple, the treasure that God has given to you, your body. Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You cannot be sampling men and women. All because somebody said, I want to marry you. I condemn it in totality. And the scriptures condemn it in totality. That is what God is saying to us. The world does not want to hear this kind of message. They rather wanted to hear. And they are looking for someone. To support. Them in their evil way. I am the last person. God forbid. To support you. In your evil way. To support you and say you should be engaging in sex before marriage. All the sex you have been having. Where has it taken you to? Where has it landed you in? The sex you have been having. You have slept with a thousand men. They keep on saying I want to marry you. And yet they have not married you. I make my boast in Jesus. And I say to you. Standing on the weight of the scripture. That getting involved in premarital sex is not for children of God. When you are born again, truly born again, that is when you ask the grace of God to come upon your life to help you. To help you stand strong against the pool of sexual attraction. Because one thing you need to know, you need to create boundaries. All these things are the things I have said or that I said in those videos. Stay away from that dark room. Stay away from that corner. Stay away in that place where you will be tempted. You and I know that Samson, as much as he was graced, as much as he was anointed by God Almighty, fell under the power of sexual attraction and he lost his glory do you think i want to lose the unction of god upon my life do you think i want to lose god's favor upon my life no neither will i encourage you to engage in such immorality because it is not in the will of god this morning, God is saying to you and I, as we have read, when we truly say we are children of God, we need to understand that we need to flee from youthful lust. Look at the scriptures in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22, the very first part of it. He said, flee youthful lust. Because it is people that are young, being youthful is not about being under 25. As long as you are alive, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> as long as everything is still okay. It means that you are youth. 
When you are still 70 and you are still, you know, functioning, you are a youth. Yes. God says, flee youthful, you know, lost. So if you know that you are going to be endangered, your, your, your salvation is going to be endangered by being in that room with that man that you are attracted to or with that lady that you are attracted to, the Holy Ghost is saying, flee, run with your heels touching the back of your head. We need to wake up and begin to do better. We need to wake up and begin to understand that if we say we are born again, there are certain things we cannot be engaging ourselves in again. When we are born again, what it means is that we are always asking God to give us the grace, give us the power, help us. Should we continue in sin because the grace of God abounds? No. If our mind is set on heaven, if our mind is set on heaven at last, if our mind is set on Christ Jesus, if we know we need to make heaven at last, we need to keep our salvation with fear and trembling. If we know that truly we are true Christians, not Christians by mouth, we need to watch who we stay with. We need to watch what we watch on TV, on our phones, on our devices. If we know that we are true Christians, we need to watch what we read. If we know we are true Christians, we need to watch who we follow on social media. If we know we are true Christians, we need to start on following some pages and accounts that all this showcases immorality. Because you cannot say you are a true Christian, child of God. And then there are some pages you are still watching. Watching how some people are naked. Watching some body parts. What are you looking for? This is the time to wake up and arise in power. And stand for what you believe in. I'm standing on Christ. My King and my Lord. My helper in time of trouble. And I am not reneging. And I stand and I say. When you are a child of God. You need to keep your body holy. You need to keep yourself. What you should do in the time of courtship. In the time of dating. When you see a lady that you like. That you are attracted to. And feel that you want to spend the rest of your life with. That period of courtship is the time to interview. That period of courtship or dating is the time to check out things, information about them. Check out their values, their visions. You know, information about their educational background, health background, family background, so many things. It's not a time to engage in sexual intercourse. Because engaging in sexual intercourse we be cloud your judgment. Because when that thing comes begins with you, let me speak pidgin language. That we speak in Nigeria. For the you know, for those of you who don't understand when I'm speaking that you know you're you're because I know I have a lot of followers who are Americans, who are Germans. When you begin to do that thing where they switch you, you know if you understand what you, you they do. It's going to confuse you. It's going to make you not go the reason where. Because that thing that suits your body. All the things where you're supposed to, you not go see her. Am I communicating this morning? Which means the things you're supposed to notice. Character flaws. Character flaws that will lead you astray. That will bring trouble. Maybe the man or the woman. Is a verbal abuser or a physical abuser, you will not be able to notice it because you've already engaged in sexual, you know, activity before marriage. Because a lot of people are trapped in that demonic cycle, demonic stranglehold. Because that sex 
has sweetened them. They forgive and say, okay, let me overlook the other things, even though he's punching me. Even though he's beating me. Ah, because of that sex, let me stay. My sister, you had better wake up and smell the coffee. My brother, you had better wake up and smell the ogiri. Sex before marriage, because not only do the man have character flaws, ladies, women also have character flaws. There are men also who are trapped in relationships with women because the sex is good. And then they begin to overlook the woman's character flaws. And they get trapped. God is speaking to you and I. To seek him. To ask for grace. To be able to stand strong. That is why the length of courtship is not supposed to be too long. So that if you also discover what is not good. You break off the relationship. And because there were no strings attached. It's easy for you. To disentangle yourself. But when you have gotten involved sexually, even after you are broken up, you find yourself lying on your bed and you still be like thinking, oh, hey, 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 but I, I like the way he's touching me, oh, I like the way she's touching me. That is the vice of the devil. That is the vice of the devil, the stranglehold of the devil. God created sex to be enjoyed by married couples. It's a time for them to have union that will make them also know what it means to be in relationship with God. Sex is for intimacy between married couples, not for singles like you and I. We are meant to keep ourselves holy by the grace of God. I know it is not easy, but it's only the grace of God that can help you and I. Ladies and gentlemen, servants of God, beloved ones of God, join me this morning. Say, my father, my fighter. This morning, I cry to you, O Lord, for you are the helper of the helpless. You are the father of the fatherless. My God and my Lord, I call upon you. According to your word in Psalm 130, verse 3 and 4, which says, If thou, O Lord, should mark iniquity, who will stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be revered. My Lord and God, my Father, my Fighter, I ask for forgiveness this morning over my past sexual activities, over engaging in a life that you did not command because I was ignorant of your law. I was ignorant of your word. Lord, this morning I ask for mercy. I ask for forgiveness. This morning, oh Lord, I ask that you strengthen me. Strengthen me to resist the pull of sexual attraction. Strengthen me this morning. Give me the grace to overcome the pull of sex. My Lord and my God, strengthen me not to engage in sex before marriage any longer. I have done it in the past. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me. In Jesus' powerful name. Join me also say, my father, my fighter. From today, let your will be done in my life. Say, my father, my fighter. All I want to do is to please you. In Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 44, verse 25, it says, He's the one that frustrated the tokens of liars and maketh diviners mad and turneth wise men backward. 
and make their knowledge foolish. Standing on the weights of my apostolic unction, this morning I decree and I declare that every power from the pit of hell, every injunction, every proclamation, every prophecy on any evil altar over your life that says you will continue to engage in immorality, every prophetic declaration that says you will live a wasted life, a life that Jesus will not be proud of. I command every of those prophetic declarations to become null and void this morning. Every man or every woman that is on any altar this morning, on any shrine, in the middle of the ocean, around the pond, around the stream, in the market square, my God and my Lord, I call your fire from heaven to roast them in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare every evil man making any enchantment and says you will die before your time. May they die and you will march on their grave. Any man that says you will not finish this month of July, I decree and I declare with the unction of God upon my life, you will see them buried in the name of Jesus. Any man or woman that says you will beg for bread, I decree lack, diseases, and sickness will be their portion. Any man or woman, whether they come from your father's side, whether they come from your mother's side, whether they are amongst your colleagues, among your workplace, in the place of your business, in the place of your residence, in the country of your residence, that says you will not fulfill your destiny. I decree and I declare they will never, never become great in this life in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare everyone that says the name of your family will be wiped away from the face of the earth. I decree their family will go extinct. Every man and every woman that says you will never understand what you're doing, that says your ministry will collapse, I stand on the finished work of Jesus. I stand under the canopy of the blood of Jesus. I decree extinction to be their portion. Their ministry will collapse. All that concerns them will collapse. I decree this and so shall it be. With the apostolic unction upon my life, I decree the month of August shall answer you. I decree you are going to August powerfully. All the blessings that God has apportioned for you, you will get it. Nothing will elude you. All the blessings and opportunities that God has preserved and kept for you, nothing will take them away. I decree blessings from the north, from the south, from the east and the west to be your portion. Any man that says these blessings shall elude you, they will never, never, ever see bread to eat. I decree sickness will not be your portion. You will not end in the hospital. Money will answer to you. And money will meet money in your hand. But the Bible says money answereth all things. May money answer to you. May the faith that God has given to you not die. Everything that want to bring the spirit of depression. That want to take away your faith. I cause it to die to the root. Every power that want to stop you. Not to be in the will of God. Every power that wants to shake your faith. Shake your ministry. The wrath of God will come upon them in the name of Jesus. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Jesus is speaking. He says, behold, I stand at the door. He said, if any man hear me and open the door unto me, I will come in and I will sup with him and him with me. Jesus is speaking to you and I this morning. He's speaking to you especially who has not given his or her life to Jesus? He's also speaking to you this morning. You may have given your life to Jesus years ago. But remember, once born again is not forever born again. You need to continuously be born again every day. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus every day. This morning, join me. You want to give your life to Jesus. Say, my father, my fighter. Lord Jesus, precious king. The I am that I am. The prince of life. The rose of Sharon, 
the mighty man in battle, I come before you this morning. The prince of Salem, the king of Salem, I come before you this morning. I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet with the blood of Jesus. I acknowledge that you died for my sake. I acknowledge that you came to save me. I reach out to you this morning. I say, Lord Jesus, I need help. Help me, grace me. Help me to stand strong against the pool of sex. Help me to stand strong not to engage in premarital sex. My Lord and my God, help me to stand strong against other vices that will bring you shame, that will cause you to turn your face against me. My Lord and my God, I do not want to be him that hears but lacks understanding. I do not want to be her that sees but cannot comprehend. My Father and my God, come into my life and empower me in Jesus' powerful name. My Lord and my God, this morning, I also rededicate my life to you. Guard me as you have been guarding me. I ask for mercy over the things I have done that are not in your will. The things that I have thought of, I've thought of things that I have done that are not in your will. Things that I should have done well that I didn't do well the way you expected me to do them. My Father, my God, have mercy upon me. Strengthen me not to fail. So that I will finish well. And if you are a preacher this morning, join me like I always pray for myself. Say this morning, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I don't want to preach to others and end up being a castaway. My Father and my God, it is heaven at last. In Jesus' powerful name. If you have prayed that prayer, heaven is rejoicing on your behalf. If you have prayed that prayer, the party is already being put in place for you. If you have prayed that prayer, I am clapping for you just like our Lord Jesus is clapping for you. And I welcome you to the body of Christ. And as I always say, which the scriptures confirm, everyone is a creature of God. But only the ones that say Jesus is Lord, those are the children of God. You are a child of God this morning when you acknowledge that our Lord Jesus is your master and savior. Welcome to the body of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. With that, ladies and gentlemen, seven.